I'm Ryan Schofield. I'm the Managing Director of Thames Valley Window Company. Uh, I'm also one of the uh, directors and founding members of Business Pilot. So as a business, we had been using a, a kind of bespoke designed uh, database uh, slash kind of CRM if you like in the modern terms uh, for the last 22 years and really we had kind of reached its, uh, it, 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 we'd expanded it as far as we could, we'd, we'd, we'd done as much as we could with it um, and we were really looking for uh, the future proof in the business, something to take us forward. Um, we knew that there were limitations to the software and um, whilst it did a lot of the day-to-day -day functions that we needed, uh, we just it wasn't cloud-based. That was a big uh, issue for me in, in terms of uh, you know, getting the, the business more incorporated into it. We weren't using it on the, uh, the sales uh, lead side. You know, we put the leads in, but they would just simply be handed out to the sales guys in manual format, which you know, is obviously quite common uh, in our industry. But um, then it was really just a case of the, the only ones you heard about were the ones that came back sold and everything else just went off into the, the ether and, and with the cost of lead production, the cost of marketing, the, the, you know, how competitive the industry is, obviously it was more, uh, it was important for us to start getting a bit more traction and, and visibility on those leads. Um, and we also had a, a, we weren't running our schedule through the system either. Um, all of the, the, the customer record was all in there, but, um, but the, the schedule board was very manual as well, whiteboards, um, pieces of paper, um, that sort of stuff, T card type um, boards. So uh, we really wanted to sort of bring something, bring it all together in, in, one, in one package. Um, and looking around into the market, nothing really offered what we wanted. There was a lot of sales based stuff. If we wanted a, a pure out and out CRM, lead management system, marketing, uh, bolt on, there was tons. Um, but that wouldn't have taken care of the ops side, which really for a company like us is, is probably the most important thing. You obviously you want to know where your leads are, you, you want to know where your turnover is coming from, but at the end of the day, really, the, the, you know, the, 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 the pinch points of the business are all within the customer journey. Um, obviously, you've got to sell it first, but um, once it's sold, that's really when the hard work starts. So for me, it was more really the system is, uh, you know, is really about giving the ops as much visibility um, across the board as possible. In concept form, uh, we were have introduced Business Pilot in around about February of 2018 um, and that uh, I'd already been uh, involved in discussions with Business Pilot sort of just uh, previous to that for a few months um, but we had a bit of a demonstration here uh, showed uh, some of my key members of the team what the, the system sort of did at that time um, and then it was about another six months after that until we actually integrated the system into Thames Valley. Um, some of that towards the end was more to do with data migration from our existing system. It was um, you know, we'd been very digitalized for the best part of 20, 25 years to be fair. Um, so for us, there was a lot of records and things that we felt we wanted to bring over. If I'm honest, having done that, probably retrospectively, it probably wasn't as valuable, some of what we did in terms of financial records and things like that, probably less important, but I think you're yeah, getting that, that um, the, the, initial, the customer records over was obviously quite, um, you yeah, know, very valuable for us moving forward, you know, very service-based and um, gave us a lot of history. Um, but there were things Things that we had in our system, certainly on the financial side of the business, um, and I think just generally on the operational side, that um, where because our company is a little bit bigger, we, we work um, in slightly more uh, diverse sort of product ranges. Um, I think we we had um, yeah, possibly more stresses and strains on the business over the years that we'd learned from, and and we'd integrated other ideas. And, and in fairness, our Business Pilot also had a lot of things that we didn't have, which was obviously you know part of the initial attraction as a window company we, we're very diverse and I think we probably not as much you know we're probably not as different now as we were a few years ago I think we were um, we were a little bit ahead of the curve in terms of coming from a more of an everyday window company of uh, UPVC a little bit of timber a little bit of aluminium um, you know kind of 10 years ago 12 years ago we started sort of transitioning a bit more and and certainly uh, you know eight to ten years ago brought in some more advanced product ranges with things like solar lux interorm um, you know more bespoke European products that um, you know, we were possibly a little bit ahead of the curve perhaps in terms of the mainstream market obviously people were already selling these products in the UK but they were very niche um, and we uh, just I think 
the, the perhaps the geo, geo, geography of where we are. Um, you know, it's obviously we're in an affluent area down in the southeast and um, bordering London as well. And um, uh, I think architecturally there was demand uh, starting to come through, and, and that we were working in those sort of areas, and, and that. I guess kind of supply and demand kind of idea that customers started asking questions we started looking for things we started seeing other opportunities and, and that sort of diversified our business and we've always uh, been, we've always been very design led and because of that we we do attract um, a, a, a particular type of clientele and, and I think you know very demanding customer base uh, and you have to be you know very on your game um, they don't suffer fools gladly you're charging a lot of money for your service typically with most expensive quote they're going to get and um, they expect to get the best and um, and obviously processes and procedure is very much part of backing that up you know having repetitive processes in the business is important you can't wing it on every job even though they're a bit bespoke even though every job's a little bit different there's a lot of repetition in there and a lot of things that you have to do um, and a lot of paperwork that goes with it um, and that for us is sort of where the system then comes in and um, that we learn a lot of lessons from mistakes in the past, costly mistakes where things weren't done right, where we didn't have the paper trails, you know, or the or the digital trails now. But um, you know where, um, so we had I think yeah different mindset coming into the system of some of the things that we needed it to offer, uh, and because of the diversity of our product ranges as well, um, things like job costings and uh, visibility of. Um, uh, individual products um, because of the different product ranges we work with and the different levels of cost that those things can bring we were quite we've been very into the sort of the verticals of it as well so rather than just looking at the job costings as a whole and thinking oh well we made 30 percent gross profit here and 27 there and 42 over here and um, we look very much down the verticals of what we expect the sales to cost, what we expect the product to cost, what we expect the fitting to cost, uh, what we expect ancillaries to cost um, and, and working on percentages of those as well so um, you know, so there was a lot of work in the, the financial side uh, both in terms of job costings but also reporting as well. Um, we, we run quite high level uh, managed accounts, uh, we've operated with a over six million pound turnover now for about seven or eight years so um, you know that in itself has demanded um, an amount of uh, accountability um, and uh, so for that reason things like work in progress um, deferred income um, th those sort of reports were also incorporated into the system to allow us to uh, run those managed accounts and, and those reports are, are available to anyone using business pilot um, who can you know really and truly incorporate those into a much higher level of uh, managed accounting uh, without necessarily uh, you know bringing in external consultants that you know costly um, uh, professional services. Certainly putting a uh, business pilot into our business has given us um, a very much a, a road test for the software as it did with um, you know with, with Charwell as well in, in, in the founding companies and also into all of the customer businesses that we've been into although we all do the same thing and there are a lot of uh, similarities into what we're trying to achieve we have learned from every customer and um, you know we are very customer led in terms of the way that we, we approach the development of the system and we're always looking to incorporate ideas but certainly um, you know the, the, the customers coming on board now are, are coming you know are plugging into a, a much more of a turnkey solution in terms of how that system is dropping into the business and the things that they can tap into and I think um, not to sort of name drop but you know in our sort of partnership with Fencer and our discussions with them as a ultimately they are a, a best practice uh, environment you know and uh, one of their major attractions to Business Pilot was that they what they felt was that you know, by bringing that into a smaller um, more everyday uh, business um, that you're you are instilling um, a practice a, a methodology that if you follow the basic steps in Business Pilot and they are very logical um, that you are actually um, you know creating a, a more um, perhaps a more robust um, you know business approach rather than just simply working on cash flow um, and like is there money in the bank uh, type thing um, it does there is a, a you know a 
a best practice uh, method to it um, uh, in terms of sort of running a, a business, a profitable business operation. To be honest, couldn't have imagined running it without something similar 10, 15 years ago. You know, we, we've been very uh, process driven in that respect. And, but, um, you know, certainly combined with a good accountant as well, you know, having, you know, someone in your business that's in charge of your numbers, um, but combining that with the visibility um, uh, that, that, and the reporting um, that Business Pilot can give you, um, it certainly you know, gives you a, a very good uh, and confident um, handling uh, uh, and a view of where your business is at any one time. Very easy to be busy fools and um, I, I suppose the nature of our business uh, makes it very difficult to see the immediate profitability you have almost got to kind of go through the the mill of the job to really know how it performed because some of the costs can be front loaded some of the costs can catch you out at the back end you know you look at the product cost going into the job and you think oh well that's going to cost me this i'll sell it for that happy days but actually you know you might end up on site three more days than you thought you, you might have an issue on site that causes the job to totally divert um, later down the line. It could be delivery issues, things that you know create additional labour costs that sort of chew it up. So um, I think you know you are always probably looking at a snapshot of something that's that's happened. But if you're you know if you monitor that um, you know consistently and, and have a. Uh, um, a uh, well, a consistent approach to how you to really, how you review that and, and and do that throughout the course of a year, then you can always sort of see where the business is is going and, and perhaps identify a trend or identify something before it becomes a trend. You know, identify a pattern and 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 um, you know by being able to drill down into things, you know, sales costs, product costs, fitting costs. If if those percentages start to rise, um, and and obviously that will then affect your your, your gross profit or net profit even um, then you know being able to see that um, it does give you the ability to react to it faster than perhaps they get into the end of the year and just thinking oh, okay we didn't make as much money as we thought we were going to make. Um, our initial inquiries go straight into Business Pilot. We actually use a, um, a link between uh, that's available to everybody, an API link that's a, that links Business Pilot to a web form. So any inquiry that comes in online uh, goes straight into the CRM. So there's no manual input there, which is obviously a great time saver because we're generating um, upwards of sort of 60 to 80 leads a week. So um, you know, even if it's just a couple of minutes of time, um, it, it is you know obviously that adds up and. You, you accumulate that over the over the course of the year um, there's definite sort of saving in, in man hours or woman hours you know people hours there um, the uh, and then again that obviously enables us to have to uh, allocate the leads easier to the salesman so leads are fully allocated within um, the CRM via the, the follow-ups and the, the the lead pipeline areas and um, so the sales guys see so, you know, logging in daily and um, in you know throughout the day are able to just pick up their leads immediately um, which does generally result in, in fast the turnaround, quicker customer response, which obviously for us is, is important in terms of getting um, the, you know, the, that, that sort of first impression um, out there. And uh, once the, the, you know, the salesmen are managing their leads within Business Pilot, which obviously gives us a greater visibility of our pipeline, um, you know, what the value of our you know, potential business is out there. We've got, um, there's time scales for closure in Business Pilot, so you can actually see not only sort of value of pipeline, but potential of, of time frame. So, you know, what might close this this month what might close in the next few months to sort of predict perhaps a little bit more where the, the business turnover is going to be obviously it's not you know completely uh, it's it's opinion based but um, you know and salesmen sometimes a bit more optimistic but it over the course of time it you know it does give you a, a good indicator once the sales are made again that all happens within business pilot um, and that very much is where the operations pick it up so um, all of the documentation is produced through the sales process in terms of contract any drawings perhaps manufactured quotes any sort of costing sheets all of that goes into business pilot um, we're able to sort of see that and administer to those documents at the point of order um, so that you know order acceptance in the office so we can essentially just check to see that, that basically the sales guy's done his job that he's given us all the documents that we need all the customer details are there sort of prior to uh, essentially um, accepting or confirming that order um, uh, via sort of templated emails and, and templated documents we're able to then get uh, you know immediate sort of welcome letters and, and order acknowledgement emails out to the customers um, sort of you know acknowledging the deposits and uh, getting invoices out for stage payments, that sort of thing. Um, 
the surveys are then allocated through Business Pilot in a very similar way to the sales lead. You, you allocate a surveyor to it. It can then sort of drop, you know, allocate it via a follow-up. The surveyor can pick it up, access any uh, of the relevant documentation that he needs, print that out to take to site. Um, so the, the day-to-day of the, the business in terms of the way we go out, the way we approach customers, the way we measure the windows, the way we survey, none of that really changes, you know, with Business Pilot. It, what it does is it just helps you sort of manage all of that in the background helps bring all that information together helps you present a more professional um, image to those customers with things like the emails and uh, document follow-up and and just being more on the ball with the customer uh, having you know when a per- when a customer brings in with a question more people in the business have an immediate answer for them and I think it makes the customer feel um, you know that like you're more aware of, of their job which is great and then certainly one of the biggest benefits for me as um, you know as as, as the MD, if you will, uh, is the overview that I have on the, the, the installation side of the company now that because we run a fully autom- a fully digitalized schedule board inside Business Pilot linked to the jobs, um, I can see exactly what's going on day to day if I need to and especially at the moment where you know things are very fraught and it's very stretched and, and I think you know every company is feeling the benefits of a, of a, 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 a buoyancy in the market but equally that brings with it stresses and strains and um, and historically you know installations meetings would be held but it's more once a week once a month it's more anecdotal chat but now I can actually physically see our schedule board on my screen uh, you know any any day time of the day any day of the week um, and I can see you know how ergonomic that that is how fluid it is how much it's having to sort of move around and I can be involved in those discussions much more easily um, whether it's here or you know mobile um, rather than perhaps having to be in front of a whiteboard or in front of uh, you know the t-card um, board um, to actually sort of impact and affect those changes if you know if, if I'm required to do so.